Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Judy, uh, John, I, I, I'm so happy to see you, really. And I just feel so privileged to be in your company. And uh, my colleague, uh, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, a champion of workers' rights and so many other good causes. Uh, our own legislative director is here, Jenny Perino. She accompanied me tonight and gives me hope that uh, the next generation is taking up this cause. And uh, Umida, what an honor for you to uh, be here uh, with us tonight. We are very privileged to be in your company. Um, I could say much about Uzbekistan. There's not time. Uh, but I'm just so um, uh, thrilled that you are here with us this evening. Uh, I say to the Machinist Union, thank you so much for what you've done to help me as a member and uh, to help tell the story. And uh, Yvette, uh, putting this program together, I'll tell you the first thought that came to mind, you know, the Re I happen to be a Democrat, the Republican convention, <laughs> the Republican convention is going to be in Cleveland, which is now part of my district. And um, so uh, my home is Toledo, so I've got the whole North Coast in Ohio, and the first thing I thought of is the arts. I love the arts, and we now have a play. <laughs> and I would grade the actors pretty good, you know, but I thought, we ought to really turn this into something, because Cleveland is the home of the International Film Festival. I don't know if you've seen that or not, or come to Cleveland during those weeks, but what a story uh, the people in this room and others have to tell. And maybe we need the arts to help us a little bit more to communicate what is inside this room and elsewhere and take it to another level. I really think that there, I, I have been to many events, I've never been to one quite like this, and I think there's a lot of potential. And <laughs> you can't do it too soon because the convention's coming in about two months. And I was thinking, wow, the Beck Arts Center in Cleveland, I could take them there. And then, you know, you'd have a great labor, and others would sponsor us in Cleveland, you know. It could be really something. <laughs> and obviously, trade and jobs are going to be a big issue in Ohio, and certainly in the district I represent in the vote-rich north. And so it's something to consider uh, uh, very quickly. <laughs> Um, and then going on to Toledo, uh, all across the north, it could be really a way of uh, uh, taking a broader story to many of the press that will be there from all over the world. So I just sort of, Ferris and John and others who are listening, uh, you know, we might want to think about this. Uh, I very warmly accept this award on behalf of the people that I represent because it was really they who lifted me here and continue to lift me here, as well as those in my own family and all of the teachers I had. And this is on 14th Street, am I correct? Are we on 14th Street? Yeah. I was actually recruited to run for office by the street priest of 14th Street, who's no longer living, Monsignor Gino Baroni. Uh, there are books written about him. And um, I think he would be so proud uh, of what is happening in this room tonight in the tradition of representing the unrepresented. And uh, so I'm just, I'm just so happy you exist and that the International Labor Rights Organization is doing such incredible work and you need more recognition for what you do for economic justice and for labor rights all over the world. Uh, so many thoughts come to mind. I was asked to answer the question, why am I interested in this? And that's a very hard question to answer except to say that I'm of Polish-American extraction and if you know anything about people of Polish heritage, wherever they live in the world, you know that most of their families' lives were completely shattered. And so they understand what's happening in Uzbekistan. <clears throat> they understand what's happening in Crimea. They understand what's happening in many places where society still remain closed. And what's interesting is that there would not be a United States without two Polish generals who helped us fight and whose uh, streets are here in Washington, Lafayette Square, uh, Pulaski Street. The, these are places that um, uh, exist in America today, but most people have forgotten why there was a, a Tadeusz Kościuszko and so forth. But I just say to you that in 1789, when our Constitution was written and those generals helped us win our freedom, uh, <clears throat> they went back to their home country 
and two years later wrote the first constitution in all of Europe where slavery was outlawed. Uh, and for that crime, <clears throat> the nation of Poland was wiped off the map of Europe for a century and a quarter. And it was because of the arts and a brilliant American president, also of my own party, uh, <laughs> Woodrow Wilson, a pianist named Ignaz Paderewski, and a politician named Woodrow Wilson that after the peace treaty of World War I was written, Paderewski's influence, who was a Polish pianist, on Woodrow Wilson caused Poland to be re-put back on the map of Europe again. It is such a great story. And then that country raised her first generation of leaders only to be invaded on both sides again. And 20% um, uh, of its population lost. And for the 400,000 Americans who lost their lives and the millions who uh, gave their lives in freedom's cause uh, in the 20th century, we owe them everything for our being here tonight. So uh, there's, a, there's a long story there uh, and, and a very powerful one, but uh, there's a deep freedom gene that beats in the heart of every single person here tonight. And I just wish that uh, we could magnify our numbers. I'm there to help uh, in that regard. I think, Judy, when you went through all of the accomplishments of the last 30 years, um, really they're transformative. And what I've learned in my own life is you just keep building. And so the smaller ripples turn into bigger ones, and all of a sudden something really great happens. But something this important is intergenerational. And we have to think about bringing up the younger talent and uh, finding ways to use members like myself to create internships in our offices so that we can connect to what is happening on the outside and think about using the instruments of power that we do have in this country to represent everyone. My time is almost up and I'm going to give you one project to work on with me because I go back to the old NAFTA fights and everything we said would happen did happen. And now this year, uh, almost three decades later, we face a presidential race, right, where trade and jobs have become an issue. Can you believe it? And uh, enough people had to be hurt to raise awareness. We tried to stop that through labor provisions in the original agreement, through environmental provisions, through adjustment provisions, both for our country and Mexico. None of that was done. But one of the remaining jobs that I think could really help on our continent, and I'm looking for sponsors for this idea, uh, is if you look at the second or third largest source of income in Mexico, it is the repatriated earnings of people who come here and work under different circumstances, many, most of the time, exploited. If we could figure out a way through the magic of the internet now and international banking to create credit unions that are rooted in the United States that would bridge the border where those who work would not have 40% of their wage taken away by Western Union, 20% on this side of the border, 20% on the other side. If we could find a safe way to do that so the people in Mexico would not be killed for handling those transactions, we could transform North and South American relations. It is this important. And so for those of you who care about money, uh, I wish I could create play. I've been talking to several people in Mexico because we set up a couple credit unions here in the United States, one in my district called Nueva Esperanza in Toledo, Ohio, and that work with many of our farm workers. But if we could find a reciprocal organization in Mexico, I said, why not make it our State Department and create a safe zone? Uh, right inside uh, some of our government offices where people could conduct their banking without fear of being um, uh, pushed, pushed back. We could really, by handling those transactions, make a difference across this continent. So I give you that idea at the same time as we try to change the law. I thank you so very, very much for this really prestigious award and I accept it on behalf of all of those who risk their lives every day to stand up for the cause of labor in our country and around the world. Thank you so very much.